the point is that hemp itself having so many uses and being a miracle plant is all about sustainability and right now we have what in, in this world and particularly in the United States what I like to call the beast which is the, uh, the petroleum, the nuclear, the pesticide you know, the whole petrochemical you know uh, mining quagmire, you know, the, the industries that are uh, destroying Mother Nature and getting giant subsidies, uh, tax breaks and everything at the same time. Uh, we need something sustainable. Our, obviously our economy is heading in a horrible direction. It's sustainable, it makes sense for the farmers, it makes sense for the environment. That's why I'm into this, into the hemp movement, uh, because I, I see all the alternatives, and I'd like to see the power get out from the hands of the beast and into the hands of the people. I don't like the, the marijuana connection in anybody's mind. I raised uh, three boys during the 60s, and I can tell you as a family we had trouble with marijuana, and I don't want anything to do with it. And I've got 13 grandchildren, and I don't want them to have anything to do with it. But I think industrial hemp is a crop that the farmers need. We need it from uh, the environmental perspective. We need it to help stabilize greenhouse gases. We need to use it as a feedstock for biorefineries so we can reduce our dependence on imported oil and petroleum products. We just need it. It's a good crop and we ought to get going and General McCaffrey is going to figure that out. Well, I think most farmers realize the difference between industrial hemp and marijuana. I mean, I'm a 67-year-old grandmother. I am not interested in uh, promoting uh, or legalizing drugs. Hemp is an industrial crop and should be under the regulations of the United States Department of Agriculture. The Canadian farmers are raising this crop in a, in a, above a border that we've determined, and they ship the finished product or they ship the raw product even across our border and it's processed in the United States. I work in drug and alcohol uh, a great deal as I'm sure many of you uh, are aware I, in my prevention work and it occurs to me uh, somewhat hilarious in a way that if you started outlawing everything that looked like a drug we'd have to outlaw powdered sugar because you cannot tell the difference between powdered sugar and cocaine by looking at it. Why is it that everything that is good for our bodies, our communities, and our planet called an alternative? An alternative to what? It's an alternative to deforestation at an unprecedented rate, extinction of species at an unprecedented rate. You know, it's like we have to change our languaging and not allow them to call hemp the alternative. Hemp is the solution. It's odd that in 30 countries around the world, including Canada and France and Germany, all of these countries, including Russia, you know, they're able to grow industrial hemp, and here we're relegated to these test crops, you know, like in Kentucky. Um, so it's odd, you know, the land of the free and the home of the brave, but you know, it may be brave, but we sure aren't free. I don't think this is sending a mixed message to our young people, because frankly, I think our young people are smarter. And I think our young people can easily discern the difference. Industrial hemp gets made into um, shirts, pants, surfline clothes, um, into even surfboards. They'd probably be awesome surfboards out of industrial hemp. They know the difference. It's the parents and maybe the bureaucracy that doesn't know. And I'd say, hey, get smart, guys. Industrial hemp is not a drug. And don't try to pawn it off as a drug and try to claim that we're misleading the youth. The youth know better. It's you guys that don't. 1960 square foot split level adobe house which has 60 percent of its volume made from industrial hemp. We have hempcrete blocks and panels which were made with a formula originating from France. Mix it up and pour it in a form and you have a strong, cohesive building block. We also have hemp fiber used in our stucco mix, replacing the nylon filaments that keep the, the surface from cracking. We used hemp for our insulation. We have hemp shingles made in Canada, guaranteed for 50 years. They look just like cedar shake shingles and they're easy to work with. 
and very strong. I'm happy with this plant. I'm happy with what we're doing and look forward to continuing despite the objections of people that have no knowledge, connection, or interest in the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation and Indian country in general. There was a reason that the powers that be put that plant here and to eradicate it from all over the planet is not exactly what the, the big guy had in mind, if you know what I mean. I mean, he puts it in there and why should we take it out? We should use it for what it's worth. If you don't want to use it, that's your business, but if it is a useful product that grows organically out of the soil, check it out. You know, there's, there's a really good uh, argument that one could make without ever growing any hemp in Kentucky, any industrial hemp in Kentucky. But if you aerial seeded the seed that you bought from Europe, let's say you just went to Europe and bought a grocery bag full of industrial hemp and you took a helicopter and you threw it or you flew it through the river bottoms of eastern Kentucky where the DEA says that there's lots of uh, illegal marijuana growing. Let's say you did that and you allow that, that industrial grade to grow all by its own without any farmer growing it culturally, okay? And that pollen uh, pollinates that illegal trade. Well, let's say that one generation passes. The illegal grower automatically has half the potency. In another generation, he has a, half of that half. So that in three generations, you can basically eliminate the outdoor illegal marijuana trade just by aerial seeding it.